In this next lesson, we're going to take a look at how to establish sales reps within X3. Um, the sales reps, um, you'll see these um, uh, a primary and or a secondary rep assigned to all the sales orders and invoices uh, that you process through the system. Um, to set up a sales rep, we're going to start under our common data menu, then go to BPs, then to sales reps. So much like our other business partner files that we uh, set up when we're starting a new sales rep, we're going to want to click on this new button. Um, you're going to go ahead and assign a sales rep code. Um, if this sales rep is an internal X3 user, you can go ahead and flag it accordingly through this box. Down on the Identity tab, much like our other business partners, we can define our short titles and our acronyms along with the legal name of the sales rep or organization, the country that they're located in, the language that the business documents should be generated with, uh, the Social Security or Federal Act Tax ID of the sales rep, along with their SIC code and their currencies. Um, over here on our addresses tab, all the particulars relative to the rep's address and telephone and email addresses can be captured herein. Then uh, finally here over on our general tab, this is where we can come to define our commissions information for the rep. So the first thing as it relates to the commissions, um, you're going to establish what your commi commission base is, whether the commission rates are based upon the uh, net price or the net revenue generated on the order, if the commission rates are to go against the margin generated on the order, or if you wish to come to establish some type of advanced formula, you can accomplish that through these uh, commission formula blocks here. Okay, so the standard commission reporting in X3, um, you have up to three uh, different categories that you can base your rates on, and these categories are uh, user-defined fields herein. So kind of the nature of the category would be if um, the sales rep's entitled, uh, for instance, for a different commission rate if they're selling to a direct end user versus a wholesaler. You could uh, purpose category one for direct sale and category two for wholesale, then come and establish uh, the relative commission rates accordingly. Um, here in the grid, you'll also note that there's two different columns for the commission rates. Um, this is the this column right here is the rate if the rep is the primary rate on the or the primary rep on the customer account. And this second column right here would be if they're the secondary rep on the customer account. So by way of illustrating that, let's actually quickly go over to our customer master file and take a look at uh, where these uh, reps are defined on the customer. So in here, if we go to common data, then to BPs and into customers. Then here on the customer file, on our commercial tab, we this is where we can come to to assign our primary and secondary rep. And uh, this commission category on the customer is where you specify if this customer is of category one, two, or three. Okay. Remember also, um, as it relates to the primary and secondary rep assigned to the account, if it's a large account, for which there's multiple ship to addresses and you have different sales reps responsible for different shipping addresses. The reps can also be defined over here, the primary and secondary on the ship to customer tab. Okay. So in the event that you have reps assigned to these two blocks here, that's going to assert, that's going to serve to override the reps that are defined here on the commercial tab. Okay, so next, um, 
Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the rep assignment and how the sales rep information flows over onto our sales invoices. So right now um, I'm on a sales invoice. So if you go at your main menu to sales invoices and invoices, what you'll notice is I input the invoice for that particular customer here on my management tab. That's I have my primary and my secondary rep flowing forth to the invoice record. Then over here on the lines tab, I have my product that I'm selling. And I'm going to go ahead and put this line in pop-up view so it's easier to see all the details. So here, here we are. We sold one drum of this axle grease. Here's your primary sales rep and your secondary rep. Here's the commission's rate associated with the primary rep, the commission rate associated with the secondary rep. Okay, and again, this is all flowing forth uh, from our uh, rate setup on the rep files. Um, one other thing you'll note here is you have a commission's weight factor that you can specify. So what this weight factor indicates is maybe you have cases where <clears throat> for the majority of the products that um, this sales rep sells, he's entitled to a 5% commissions rate. But if he's selling maybe particular products that we're looking to really move this quarter, um, he might get an additional commission markup. That, can, that markup can be um, made manifest through this weight factor. And what you will also note is uh, through your sales price book setup, and we'll talk about this in greater detail um, once we go through the price book setup. But if we come to sales, or excuse me, to setup, then sales, price lists, and setup, this is where we come to define our uh, sales price pricing parameters. What you'll notice herein is on the second tab of our sales price parameters, we'll see a field in here on the price free tab. In here, we'll see um, on this particular price book for the sales rep commissions. Okay, so we can come in here and flag that to a yes then that will serve to allow us to define what the additional commission premium is for the rep when he sells this particular product. So whatever that premium is, again, that's going to flow over into this field on our invoice record. Okay. So finally, as it relates to the reporting on our sales rep commissions, if we go to our printouts, printouts then to reports at our main menu, we can come in here and pull up this COM rep report. In this case, I'm going to run it for all my sales reps. You can define over what date, uh, date range you want the commission's activity to be presented. If you want to print out, you know, the details by rep, if you want to include unvalidated invoices that have been generated, we can go ahead and set all these parameters and come over here and click on print. Then when we do, that's going to serve to generate this report for us, which are going to, is going to provide for us all the uh, invoices that were generated um, that are assigned to that rep over your specified period. You're going to have your invoice, and your invoice number, the date in which it was generated, the product that was sold, the amount of the sale, okay, the per unit margin. You have your basis for the commission, whether that basis, as we said before, is on a revenue basis or a margin basis. Okay. We have the commission coefficient or, um, you know, the weight factor. You have the applicable commission rate, then the extended amount here. Okay. And again, we get this, this report is, it'll go ahead and total it up for you by rep. And it'll give you just a summary on a rep by rep basis. Okay. So that's a little bit about the commission's reporting um, associated with the sales rep. Um, just a couple back here, uh, once again, on our sales rep, just a couple additional pieces of information. 
Um, down here on our financials tab, we have an accounting code that we can associate with the we could associate with the sales rep. So if you, um, you know, maybe at the time in which you're doing your uh, invoicing, if you want to recognize some type of commission accrual and commission expense um, at the time of invoice validation uh, through some specialized setup of the sales rep accounting code, you can accomplish that. Okay, we have some CRM tracking capabilities with the sales rep, the sales site, the primary sales site that the reps associated with. Um, then finally, down here in our analytical dimensions block, if um, we want to assign this rep to a particular cost center, you know, maybe the cost center is the commercial division or the sales division, and whenever we're recording expenses for that rep, we can, by utilizing our default dimensioning rules, we can get that cost center information to flow right over um, onto our expense vouchers. One final note on the sales rep. Uh, much like our carriers and our suppliers and our other business partner files, if we want to print out a listing of our sales reps, if we come over to our printer icon and come to list, from this prop, these print codes, I'm going to go ahead and choose the sales rep listing. And in this block here, I'm going to print out the full range of sales reps. I can come in here and specify that I also want the address details associated with the rep. Come over and click on our print button. And that in part will generate this crystal report, giving us a register of all the sales reps that we have uh, loaded into X3.